Hi, this is Pastor Manny Phillips. Welcome to Leader to Leader Podcast. Today we have a special, special guest for you. Pastor Andre L. Williams and First Lady Belinda Williams of Love Christ Ministries. And I am just excited. This is my son in the gospel. He's one of our life changing fellowship churches. And I'm just excited about having him with us on today. And so I want you to call every code 773 677 7722. Or you can text us with the same number 773 677 7722 with your questions. And so we're going to get right in. Welcome, Pastor Williams. Welcome, First Lady Belinda. Thank you, Apostle. Thank you for having us on Leader Leader. We're glad yes. to be here with you. Amen. So good to see you. They, they have such a beautiful smile. And I just love these two. And so we're going we're gonna to dab right into it because. Uh, we got. I know people are waiting uh, with anticipation to hear a couple talk about ministry. So tell us uh, a little bit about the Love of Christ Ministry. Well, thank you, Apostle. Well, the Love of Christ Ministry, Apostle, we're in our eighth year, and our ministry is born out of the undying love and the power of Jesus Christ. And our mission, of course, is to reinstitute the love of Christ back in the ministry and back into the community, back into the world. That's our mission. And every Sunday, every week, we always endeavor to try to keep that promise to God that will bring his love back into the earth. And we thank God for the opportunity to do so. Amen. Amen. Wonderful. Wonderful. Now, now I'm going I'm to uh, push you a little bit. So tell me, how did you two meet? <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna let First Lady answer that one. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you, Apostle. Because uh -huh. he had a different version. Yes. But, um, uh -huh. Well, we both met um, through a mutual friend at okay. a birthday party. Okay. And it was during a time where neither of us was looking for a relationship, but you know, God had a way of uh, love finding us. Yes. And so yeah. we met, and um, from that day on, we were. In contact every single day. Wow, wow, that's <laughs> awesome. So, what's your version, Pastor? Well, I believe um, it was love at first sight, Apostle. Okay, okay. Um, at the birthday party that we was at, there was many people all over the place, mm -hmm. but I only saw one soul. Oh, okay. And when she walked through the door, I knew that that was somebody I wanted to at least yeah. say two words to. Okay. And after a while, I think I came up with my own scripture. The Lord is my shepherd. Yes. <laughs> and I saw exactly what I wanted. All right. <laughs> I like it. I like it. So that's your version too, first lady. <laughs> that's awesome. That's awesome. So now when you met, were you in uh, ministry? Were you uh, in ministry when you met at that birthday party? No. no, we weren't in ministry. We okay. were in church. Okay. But uh, not in ministry. Okay. All okay. right. And then over time, God has uh, woke us up to ministry. Okay. Very well. So who went into ministry first? Okay. Come on, uh, first so lady. It was I who uh, went into ministry first. And okay. It's a testimony that we like to share would be me and the children. And we would get up and go to church on Sundays. Okay. And we would stay home and watch the football game. Okay. And one Sunday, the kids say, Mommy, I want to get baptized. And so we let them get baptized on the spot, or I let them get baptized on the spot. Okay. When we came home and told the dad about uh, the kids being baptized, he's was so upset. Why would you do that without me being there? Okay. And from that day on, he has been at the church okay. and never turned back. Oh, wow. So that was awesome. the turning point for him. Wow. Sure so, so, so the kids were just catalysts of bringing you in. Yes. Yes. Absolutely. Wow. And then God took you from there and led us to higher heights to where yeah. we are now. Amen. Amen. That is, that, is, that is just powerful. That is powerful. So you... You, you as the pastor of a, a thriving church, a growing church, you went into ministry. So some people want to know exactly uh, how do you know your call? So how did you answer that call? You know, uh, Apostle, for me it's been uh, elevation by working. Okay. Um, I started out as a brother in the church. I was just glad to hear the word. Okay. And uh, one day my pastor decided that uh, since I'm a servant, I had the servant's heart of a deacon. Okay. I was happy right there. Okay. I love to serve the Lord. Amen. And then one day in prayer, you know, the Lord called me. He said, I've called you to minister to the poor at heart and the trodden down spirit. I'll mm. never forget those words. Wow. And I knew that I had to step up to ministry. 
And then one day the Lord called me to eldership, and then one day to be a pastor. And it was uh, it was a journey. Okay. It's still a journey. Okay, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. So, so this is for both of you. How did becoming a pastor and accepting that call affect your marriage? Because some people don't want to be married to a preacher, <laughs> because Amen. that because that becomes their their wife, the church become their wife. Amen. So Amen. how how did you receive that, first lady? Well, um, at first it was a bit challenging for me to accept. Okay. Um, I wasn't sure if I was ready for the responsibilities and the demand that it would take on our relationship. Okay. But as um, he grew uh, closer to the Lord and through mm-hmm. seeking God, yes. I grew to open up yes. to that uh, possibility of being pastor and first lady. Okay. And we embrace it together. Mm-hmm. And so that's what, how we get through it together. Okay. Amen. We seek God together. Amen. So, Pastor, how did you accept that when you know of a certainty that God has called you to lead his people? You know, it was a, it was a daunting thought. Apostle, okay, to go from being a minister or an elder to being a pastor. Initially, I didn't think that the leap would be so wide. Okay, but as I approached the river, mm-hmm. it became an ocean. Okay, okay, okay. okay. <laughs> and to take that leap of faith, I knew that one thing I did know for certain is that I couldn't do it alone. Okay, and I knew that in order for it to be effective and mm-hmm. to be right that I would have had to make sure that my rib was with me. Right. I like that. And um, I kind of liken it to Exodus thirty three fifteen, when Moses said, Lord, don't send me to Canaan unless your presence is with oh, right, me. Right, right, right. I felt the same way about First Lady. Lord, don't send me into ministry yes. unless your presence and my wife is with me. Amen. And after prayer and supplication, sure mm-hmm. enough, the Lord sought us out together. Oh, wow. Awesome. Awesome. That's awesome ministry. Can you... Um, Share, share with us uh, the strategy for the vision of uh, the love of Christ ministry. Well, you know, the Bible said without a vision, the people, people perish. perish. So, so what is the vision for the love of Christ? Well, you know what? Apostle, our vision is vast. Okay. Um, and our vision is to dynamically change our community. Okay. With programs and mm-hmm. with services that's going to both uh, allow us to mesh together the word of God and follow those words up with deeds. Okay. I believe that a ministry that only talks about it Mm. is only doing half the job. Mm. So after we minister in prayer, after we minister in services, then I believe that our ministry should be able to concretely show evidence in the community that we're actually changing lives Amen. through the spirit and through the natural. Yes, yes. So so how do you get your people to understand the vision that God has given, has laid on your heart? How do you get the people to follow that? You know, uh, Apostle, that's a great question, and I believe that that's a two-part answer to that. Okay. I believe that you first got to lead by actually casting a vision. Mm-hmm. Because if you don't cast a vision, yes. they'll never know you have one. All right, all right. And I like I, that. And after you cast a vision, you have to be the first partaker of the vision. Yes, yes. If the people never see you actually doing the things you say we must do, mm. they'll never have a leader to follow. Yes. And then I believe, just like Moses did, you know, you lead by example, and then you have to demonstrate the power of God. Yes. People will always follow the anointing. Yes, yes. So when you demonstrate the power of God, it tends to draw people to follow amen. that vision. Amen, amen. So what, what, what has been your biggest challenge as a pastor and first lady what has been uh, as you stated when we first started that you know the challenge is going to always be there mm-hmm. yes yes first lady you want to ask somebody so what is what are some of the challenges that that you face as a a, a young couple thank you for saying young yeah <laughs> yes, thank you. well you know pastor um some of the challenges for us and with most churches in this day and time uh, I found that this generation could either take or leave ministry. Yes, yes. It's not like when when I was younger, when and, and when you first started out in ministry, mm-hmm. where people gravitated toward the church because yes. it was a staple in their lives. Yes. But in this society, mm-hmm. I find that this generation can take it or leave it. Okay. So we have to be dynamic. We have to be pragmatic. 
and we have to be consistent okay. to draw these souls in, and we have to have a better follow-up than we've ever had before. Yes. So our challenge is always keeping those souls engaged yes. to yes. the weekly uh, mandates of ministry. Okay. That's been difficult, but it's a challenge and it's doable. Yes. And of course, for us uh, in this day and time, because churches, you can take it or leave it. Yes. Financial is always a big part of ministry, yes. and making sure that you can fund the ministry and the ministry funds itself. Yes. Um, used to be a time when tithes and offerings were enough. Now, yes. We have to go beyond that in order to make sure that ministry is funded yes. properly. Yeah. And um, those yes. are some of the challenges. And for us individually, we're waiting for God yes. to bless us with our first building. Prayerfully, thank you. Yes. In 2019, we'll see that. Okay. Back. All right. All right. Speak it. Speak it. It's, it's in your mouth. It's in your mouth. Amen. Yeah. It's in your mouth. <laughs> now, now, you know, to piggyback on that question and uh, answer, rather, that you gave, what? how do you and First Lady uh, deal with or handle that spirit of discouragement? Mm -hmm. do, are you able to share? There's some things that... I hear or that I'm confronted with that I, I have this statement that there's some things I'm going to take to my grave mm -hmm. that I'll never be able to utter that again. Mm -hmm. So how do you deal with discouragement uh, when there's something pressing that you don't want to bother First Lady with? So how do you deal with discouragement? You know, uh, Apostle, I, I'm glad that you asked that question okay. because most pastors will not admit yes that absolutely we go through times yes. of discouragement yes yes guess what yes it is biblically sound yes that men and women of god go through times of discouragement yes yes ask david yes ask abraham yes ask paul yes ask moses yes. they'll tell you that we deal with discouragement yeah. and don't forget elijah now. don't forget elijah <laughs> <laughs> great discouragement yes 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 and i think that um for me mm -hmm. And First Lady, we've adopted, and it's, it's, it's an ongoing thing, but okay. we've adopted a couple of terms that help us out okay. when we're going through discouragement. Yes. And they seem very simple, but they're very powerful to us. Okay. And one of our first creeds is, one crisis at a time. Okay. We I like that. by that. One yeah, crisis, one at, crisis a at a time. I and, like that. And that means that when you're overwhelmed with multiple crises, mm -hmm. you got to take the one that's pressing the most. Yes. And you have to complete that mission yes. and move quickly to the next crisis. Okay. okay. Which brings me to our second creed. Okay. Which is remember that which matters most. Okay. If you know what's most important and what's pressing and what you have to do, mm -hmm. you'll be able to eventually right. knock that list of crises down and okay. follow that point. All right. All right. We use that. All right. I like that. I would do a rewind on that one. <laughs> <laughs> if I was preaching, I would do a rewind on that one. <laughs> yes. Yes. Uh, uh, you can you send your questions, every code 773-677-7722. Uh, Pastor Williams is is a powerful, anointed young man. So now, now my next question, I'm pushing it a little bit. What? Give us a peep into you all's prayer closet. Mm. You know, uh, it, it's, it's, it's a sad state of affairs. Mm. But in my reading, it says that a lot of pastors just do not have a prayer life. Mm. And, and and I want to know how can you run with the vision, and the vision come from God, and you don't talk to Him. Yeah, yes. <laughs> the designer. So so give us a little peep into your prayer closet. That's good. Yeah. Apostle. Well, um, into my prayer closet, mm -hmm. and I know I might lose a lot of uh, preacher friends. Okay. But my prayer closet starts with reflection, okay. Apostle. Mm. Um, it starts with my desire to want to be right before God. Yes, yes. My prayer closet starts with my repentance. Yes. It starts with my heart. Yes. Making sure that it's in right standing. Yes, yes. In righteousness with God. Yes. And then it flows into my own thanks and praise and worship okay. for who he is, what he's done, what he's going to do. Yes, yes. That's my prayer closet. Then it flows into my uh, all of my supplications and my requests that yes. I have before him. Yes. And I, I usually start with my family. I usually start with my children, yeah. my grandchildren. Yes. And then it all it goes to the people of God. And it mm. goes to the ministry and the things that I'm asking him to do for the church, for the people. And yes. then, of course, the community and the world. Mm. And then nations that I haven't been to. And people that are suffering more than I. Yes. yes. That's a that's a peak into my prayer process. Yes. Yeah. Amen. But it Amen. starts with my own reflection. Amen. It starts with my own Amen. repentance. Amen. And I like that. that. So, so, so let's let's push that a little bit. So, how is it uh, the two of you pray? You know. Mm -hmm. uh, so, can you give us a little 
little snippet into uh, how you two touch and agree together as mm. husband and wife. Because two are better than one. Yes. Mm. And, yes. and one can chase a thousand and two can chase ten thousand. <laughs> so so, so yes. how, how should a husband and wife pray? Uh, do, can you encourage them to, to touch and agree together? Because I've had people tell me they just don't pray together. Mm, that's true. Yeah. You, you know, a first lady can jump on, on this as well. Well, sometimes when we don't have the opportunity to pray yes. at home together, yes. in route, he will call me on the phone. Okay. And we will just go in at 6, at 9, yeah. at 12, at 3. We'll try to touch and agree yes. with yes. each other and pray. And mm. we, you know, one, we go back, piggyback yes. off each other Amen. so that we cover all bases. Yes. The Bible says that we ought to watch as well as yes, pray. Yes, absolutely. So while he's praying, I'm watching. Yes. And I'm seeing what God has for us. Yes. You know, to, to be on alert about. Amen. And then amen. While I'm praying, he's doing the same. Yes, yes. Wonderful, wonderful. I love that. I love that. One You're, thing I would I would say to pastors, mm-hmm. um, don't try to look for a stationary place okay. to pray with your spouse. Okay. I don't care if you're on the way back from the store. I don't care if you're on your way to work. If you got separated from church, mm-hmm. she's at church, you're in a different place. Find a, a time yes. to touch and agree with your wife. Amen. It doesn't have to be 20 minutes. You'd be yes. surprised what a three-minute powerful prayer with your mm. wife. Yeah. yeah. It's not how much you say. It's what, what you, you say. say. Yes. 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 Amen. Now, now, um, as you know, we have a, a, a Bible Institute, a Bible college, and uh, periodically uh, my seminary, uh, Northern Seminary, um, they do a, a alumni training and they allow us to come in and they talk to us. So it was a, a, a elderly gentleman that, of course, graduated years and years before I got there, but he had retired and he said the one thing that he regret the most is that he vented about things that wasn't right and members uh, in the church in front of his children. Mm. And so they are adults now, and they are turned off by church. None of them attend church. None of them have a relationship with Jesus Christ. So how is it that you, uh, and he said that's, that, that was his biggest regret, mm-hmm. is the fact that he was not mature enough to maybe talk to his wife or go in his closet and talk or talk to the person that needed to be talked to because sometimes we don't address the person Mm -hmm. you know we talk to everybody else but that person Mm -hmm. and so how do you deal with people that uh sometimes get out of pocket as uh for lack of a better word or how do you get things off your chest when things are not going as you desire them to go that's a good question apostle um and in thinking about that question i'll start with the premise that uh as men and women of God, the first thing we ought to remember is that we are human. Yes, yes. And we're only, and we're natural. Yes. We're only supernatural mm-hmm. when we got Christ abiding on the yes, inside. Yes, yeah, absolutely. And when we're listening to him abiding on the inside. Yes, yes. But the unfortunate thing is that when we follow that natural side, yes. we're going to have natural moments. Yes. Pastors do vent. Yes. Pastors do uh let things off of that chest. Mm-hmm, I've mm-hmm. been it about people, places, and things, but I find the best practice to be is to first vent to God. Yes. Vent to Him first. Yes, yes, okay. He said, cast all of your cares upon Him. Mm. You know, mm-hmm. so that's the first thing. Now, <clears throat> when it comes to dealing with people, uh-huh. The system that I use, I call it discern and disseminate. Okay, I like that. Discern and disseminate. Mm-hmm. Um, the first thing you got to do is discern okay. what it is that you should say okay. and how to say it. Yes. And discern if you should even be talking to this person or talking to somebody differently. Okay. And then okay. disseminate. Okay. You have to decide what information you should give them mm-hmm. and what you should withhold and take to your grave. Yes. Because if you don't discern and disseminate, you can find yourself venting at the wrong time, saying the wrong thing. To the wrong person. To the wrong person. <laughs> and you'll find out later yeah. that you didn't discern right. and you did not disseminate. <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> so I try right. to use that practice. Okay. And I try to use that to the, to the best of my ability. Yes. I'm not always successful. Yes, yes. But I think it's a good practice. Yes, I, I like that. I like that. So now we're going we're gonna to push a little further. 
Uh, as far as pastoring, you know, people, they gravitate to the leader. You know, everybody uh, love their pastor. If they're there, they love their pastor. And so how do you find time to spend time with your wife and your children? Uh, I know they're getting grown now, so how do you uh, make that time for them where they... You know, the, you know. Sometimes kids just dislike church because they are there all the time. Mm-hmm. They uh, parents is always ministry. When you sit at the table, it's about church. You see, we driving in the car, it's about the church. Mm-hmm. So, how do you relax? What's your method of relaxation and just getting a good laugh in? <laughs> um, great question, Apostle. Mm-hmm. But I, before I answer, I gotta say that for years. First Lady and I didn't have a good answer to that question okay. because we ran ourselves ragged, mm-hmm. uh, trying to put out every fire in the ministry. Yes, yes. Um, and then it, we almost got lost. We almost lost our own lives yes, yes. trying to save everybody else's. Mm. So in these recent years, we realized that we're no good to nobody else if we're not good to each other. Okay, okay. So what we, what we decided to do is start to steal away time. Okay. For passions that make us smile. Yeah, okay. Things that cause us to laugh. Yes, yes. Um, we've taken time off to travel, to see our grandkids. Okay. To go to different places. Okay. We train people up to be able to handle the parts of ministry that I thought that was going to fall. Yeah, if, I if, if, I, if you didn't have your hand in it. Yeah, right. right. So uh, it's a lesson I learned from you a long time ago. Mm-hmm. Sometimes you got to let people fail. Yes. So that they learn how to succeed. Yes, absolutely. So going through that process and evolution mm-hmm. is giving us time to be able to travel and even catch up on some television shows yes. that we haven't seen in a long time. Yes, absolutely. And, and date again. Yeah, okay. I love that. I love that. You know, I, I try to get away every three months, mm-hmm. uh, even if it's just for a day, to get away. And, and I find that when I come back, I am uh, more anointed. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, mm-hmm. refreshed. Yes, yes. So I, I like that, that you're, you're getting away and spending time together. Yeah, because uh, people will zap and suck all of your strength out. So you have to uh, have wisdom in that area. And you know what, too, Apostle? Mm-hmm. I learned that just because I'm a pastor, mm-hmm. that does not mean that Belinda loses her husband. Right. My children lose their dad. There you go. There and you my go. grandchildren lose Papa. Yeah, there you go. None of those things should get lost right. because I'm a pastor. Yeah, right. Okay, we're going to pause just for a moment.